Hi guys, I'm Shasa, the integral. Welcome in this video. Today we're gonna discuss about the crowd operations. Yes, I'm talking about the insert, update, and also the delete operations in PHP. We're gonna create a form and we're gonna fetch that particular record which the user is sending to your server. We're gonna validate that particular record. We're gonna then insert the data into your table or perform the crowd operations. So how can you do that? Let's get started. Okay, now how can you perform the CRUD operation? You know very well that we have already created the file. How can you upload the files? In your inner file, I'm saying I have the form. And in this time, I'm saying I have the input type equals to text. And name of the file is, let's suppose, std name. So it, you know very well that we have already created the databases. We're gonna access the database, sorry, by using the PHP PHP my admin. I think the name of the file is university. Make sure it's not working. Check your exam because you have to start the MySQL if you are working or interacting with your database once again refresh as you can see it's fine university now you have a student table as you can see this is the table of the students and you have the first name last name surname email and also the student date so you have to create the first name last name surname and also the email because these four fields are required and these are the auto generated section so how can you do that first of all i'm saying student file student name and you have a last name last name surname email since you are getting Sorry, since you are sending the data from the HTML, you have to receive this particular data. Now I'm saying post which one I'm saying student name, four fields, last name, surname, email. Fine, I'm saying this is the first name and I'm going to fill out some other variables so you guys can understand. Last name, surname, and this is the E. Now you have to connect with your database. To connect with your database, you need few informations like server name, username, server name, password, and also the database. Username is root since we have already connected with our local environment. And I'm saying password. Server is a local host, and name of the database is Uni. So, as you can see, name of the database is Uni. Now, how can you connect with your database? I'm saying new MySQLi, it takes four parameters your server name. Sorry, we have to use the server name, not the user name. Database name. Server, sorry, we have to use the server name, username, password, and also the database name. Now, store the instance. I'm saying DB 
here is the instance and check the instance in your connection. I'm saying if if the connection is exist db connect error then you can say database is not connected and die script or you can use simply use this here fine so now go to the page refresh the page this is the index as you can see with student name and defined key fine that's it you have just connected with the database otherwise you can say working it's saying working that means you have successfully connected with your database now you have to validate the information which is coming to your data or the form i'm saying if you are receiving the form how can you check is set submit then you can say okay okay Otherwise, you can say check your form with the single braces. Post or in simple words, use these two from here to here. You can say first name is set and make sure if you are checking not empty not empty which one first name then say okay otherwise you can say check your forms so you can use you can validate the form like this so this is the first name and also you can use like this last name because all fields are required surname and this is the email address now once again attempt you are sent you are leaving this empty are saying check your form if you are using the same it's saying okay so now you are validating the data create a skill query insert into sorry you have to use the double quotation insert into students i think the name of the students you have to give the name of your columns what are the name of your columns these are the name of your columns And you can pass the values then. I'm saying values are which is coming from the database first name, and this is the last name, this is the surname, and this is the email. Now you have to execute this query. How can you execute this query to check either it's working or not? SQL and now, sorry, where is the connection? So this is the instance DB. So DB, this is the instance. And now you can use the query and pass the SQL query here. It will return the Boolean true or false. You can say inserted, otherwise, you can say not inserted. Fine. So, go to as you can see, you have only one record here. Fresh, 
So first name, last name, surname, email. So first name I'm saying Alex, last name, uh, let's suppose John, surname, let's suppose XYZ, and password or the email, let's suppose Alex at gmail.com. Submit the form at saying not insert. Now, if it's not inserted, then you can use the DB and check the error. Once again, refresh. It's saying you have an SQL error. Check your manually MariaDB to your at gmail.com. Now we use echo. Echo here and also echo for checking either the data is coming from the previous side or not. So Alex join xyz.com. We ensure that the, the data is coming from the database. This way you can debug your code. Okay, I'm saying single quotations. Use the single quotations here and also the single quotations here and also the single quotations here. I think that's why it's not working because all these are the inserted. As you can see, inserted, you have successfully inserted. So you can also use the functionality like session. I'm saying session, session start. And now you can store the success data after the storing to redirect your page let's suppose session uh status status i'm saying equals to one which is the success you can also use the tree here and the message you have successfully inserted the data same goes here uh, message message so now how can you redirect okay now i'm saying that redirect from index page to the inner page so your user can easily understand that you have successfully or he is successfully inserted the data how can you do that? You can use the header, first of all, location, column. Now give your location. I'm saying index.php. Fine. Same goes here. Since you are storing the data here, then definitely you have to fetch the session here. I'm saying session start and now check the session here if is set session which one here you have to see if you say your status equals to one equals to one Then create the H1. Like if I'm saying, and if in here I'm saying, you have to print the session name or the message you have already stored in the sessions. Which one? This one. So this is more suitable. Once again, I'm saying LX2, 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 email is LX2 at gmail.com. Submit. Sorry, you have to send to the inner, not the index. So that's why it was not working. And you have successfully inserted a third one, third one. Once again, LX3, it was my mistake, sorry for that. 
click on the button as you can see you are sending to the inner.php and in this time you are saying you have successfully inserted the data now here if you refresh the page as you can see your message is still there you have to destroy the sessions after this one or after your body session destroy because this is a flash data so session destroy now once again i'm saying abc 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 i'm saying info at abc dot com submit the data you are there if you refresh as you can see it's gone so in this way you can insert the data okay now you know very well that you are inserting the data after inserting the data then definitely you have to show that particular data here so now you can use the same thing like uh, connecting your database so this one you can also create another file which holds the instance informations let's suppose i'm saying db i'm saying db fine just copy the page copy the code and paste the code here first of all and now include this file here require which is i'm saying db.php and now you can use this db fine similarly you can include the file here require i'm saying db.php now if you access the db variables here just try it go to the page refresh the page as you can see it's giving you the object so now you have the object here you are going to create a table with the th name of the student i'm saying id here i'm saying student and sorry first name last name i'm saying surname and this is the email and if i say this is the date so now you have to create the tr which is the table row we're going to discuss about the table row but for now go to the page refresh the page which is the inner so as you can see this is the data and make sure i'm saying wait a few seconds you can say first name last name surname and also the email fine now it's more appropriate break the row or you can use the margin if you are familiar with the css okay now fetch the data from the table so how can you fetch the data you have the db instance so as you can see this is the db instance now you can say that db instance so i'm saying query or i'm saying sql i'm saying select static from students and execute this query i'm saying db 
db query and give the sql to this one i'm saying result then you say okay now execute this one nothing is happening db query sql and the result you have to use the result you have to say that num rows and now i'm using the loop here i'm saying and if because you are starting the if here so that's why you have to end the if here you are using the column make sure not the braces and now you can also print the var dump result fetch associative array that means we are fetching the result as an associative array so as you can see you have the six array the length of the array is six the id is one and as you can see a lot of information is coming Okay, now I'm saying while result page associative array you are giving to the variable. I'm saying my rows, and now use a column and you have to end the while loop. Here you can use the TR here and TD, and you can use the PHP script. Now I am saying ID. Copy the column name, keep the column name here. Go to the page, refresh the page. As you can see, you are fetching the data. So, once again, I'm saying Shazad Ahmed. I'm saying, so I'm saying abc at gmail.com. You have successfully inserted as you can see it's showing you here so you are inserting the data you are fetching the data. so how can you delete a particular record and this time i'm saying this is a td and i'm using the anchor here href and i'm saying delete now i'm saying go to the index.php and I'm sending the data like uh, std equals to fresh as you can see student now you are sending the data as a get method as you can see this is the get method make sure a student name and these are the fields are not there so that's why it's giving you the error if you are seeing how can you fix this one if you say is set okay now i'm saying that this is the delete file which we are going to create first of all so this is the php file we have just created and now you can just use the include to include your file now you have successfully included the file now how can you fetch the data since you are using the get method you can say that if you have the is set and you are getting the data by using what is the name of the file or the 
so this is the data sorry if you are getting the data and also it's not empty it's not empty which one this one then you can store in a variable like uh, store this i'm saying student table std uh, std pro and you can now perform the db query db query we have to write the sql query before performing the db query i'm saying delete students where id equals to you have to use the id query now execute this query if it's fine then do that which one you have successfully deleted the record you have deleted the row you cannot delete the row right now you cannot delete the row right now and in this time let's just see location is the inner dot php now once again Enough. So we are going to delete the seventh record. Sorry, it was my mistake. Delete from students where ID equals to this one. So once again, delete the record. You have successfully deleted the record. You have successfully deleted the record. And now you have successfully deleted the record. As you can see, you have three records. You have successfully deleted the records. So, how can you insert the record? So, now I'm saying I'm going to create another. I'm saying. I'm saying edit. So, this is the edit file. First of all, and you are sending the data to the edit file. So go to the page, refresh the page. In this time, I'm saying edit. Just click on the edit, and as you can see, it's not showing you the edit. Since you have not created, so that's why you have to create the file. So you have created the files. Copy the entire code, paste the code here. I'm going to save the time so that's why i have to delete this one this table let's try and also i'm going to delete this one and also going to delete this one. so you have the same file same data in this time it's saying that you are going to this to the update file the method is post and you are sending the hidden information input type hidden name equals to uh, std id std id and the value is i'm saying get the name of the so this is the name of the variable so refresh right click view page source as you can see this is the now you are sending two four five fields to the update table so once again you can find the data from the database how i'm saying uh, db so this is the instance i'm saying sql and now i'm saying 
select steric from students where id equals to which one this one or in simple words you can say you can concatenate and you can use this one id equals to this one now execute the query so you have a dv instance query write the sql query here and now you are saying results and ward up this result refresh as you can see you are using fetching the data if i say associative array so as you can see at the zero index you have the id at the one index you have the name so now i'm saying at the zero index fetch asoc or so this is the array not the associative array so i'm saying my data so copy the data and use the value and say that this is the zero index once again copy two three sorry you don't need to write the zero it's a one because it's a username copy the code copy the entire code paste the entire code here entire code here and also the here zero or oh, one two three and this is the four. you know very well that you are getting the values so now in this time you can say that update fine you have to create the update file and now here you can add the db file so this is the db since you are sending the data from here to this update file then we, then definitely you have to uh, fetch the data so how can you do that just copy this code so you can reuse this code In this time, you are saying just copy all the code. Use that particular code here. So now you have to add it to this SQL query, first of all. So you are fetching, you are receiving the data which is coming from this edit table. You are validating the form. Once again, refresh. And this time the file is update. Sorry, edit. Fine. And now you have to perform the update operations. So how can you perform the update operations? You just alter the table, sorry, not actually alter the table, just alter the SQL query. So I'm saying update students. Now I'm saying set, which one uh, I'm saying, what are the name of the, so these are the name of the, columns 
now I'm saying that's first name. last name and also surname with the equal sign and also I'm saying once again you are executing the SQL query and you are setting the same things like you have successfully updated you have successfully updated you cannot update the data right once again refresh and make sure you have to use the where clause so i forgot to use the where clause where id equals to which one since you are getting the extra field from the system so that's why you are saying this is the extra field you can keep this one here and you can add another data like this like this fine use the id here fresh i'm saying add it John, add it. That's why that added email. I'm using X update undefined array key std. Okay, why it's giving you the error because as you know that you are not passing the value as a get and you are using the get value here so that's why you have to use the is set if the value is set then you can print the value or simply you are getting the value from the database then definitely you can also use the database value here let's suppose uh, zero And now go to the update. You can also getting this one. So if you are not getting this one, then you can also set the value here. And you can say, session start check your value check the data before I delete the patient and in this time you can send to the main file which is the inner file fine but before doing this you have to check this value if it if it's said if it if it's set it's not set and also if it's empty then perform this operation fine refresh the page now as you can see check the data before doing this and you also have this one now once again it's not working and now if you view the page as you can see you are getting the three values since you are getting the three values and you are updating the data here so now once again edited edited i'm saying once again so this is the surname update the file as you can see okay so it's saying where id equals to why it's saying where id equals to because it's now considering that this is the okay so this is my mistake because you are 
we have to use this after this. Now it's fine. Okay, once again, email update. As you can see, it's updating the email. Now you can also update the email. Update the email. It's saying check the data before the delete operations. Fine. So you have to fix this one if it's not empty. Once again, remove this one, update. We have to fix this one, why it's not working, not, you can use the die here and stop this one, you can debug this, okay, it's saying not, it's not executing now. Press the page. Now, if you execute, I know why it's happening. So, when you go to the update, then you have to say that test try. Let's suppose session test try. So remove the previous sessions and say session start. So once again, Alex edited. Hello. Okay, it's not updating right now. I'm saying long one. If it's stating one. Okay, otherwise you have to destroy the session destroy. Okay. You can directly destroy the session here. Now it's fine. Now So in this way, you can create the fraud operations. Basically, why it's happening? Because we never use the sessions for the flash data, which we have already used here. We always use the Laravel or the coding net or any kind of framework to perform these kind of operations. Okay, guys, so in this way, you can perform the fraud operations. 
सो आई होप गैट यू आर एंजॉइंग अवर वीडियोज थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग